Welcome to Raw Impressions, Monday's music mini-episode. This week, a very special interview with Carlos Van Hifte. His last name is Dutch, spelled H-I-J-F-T-E. I'm probably pronouncing it incorrectly. Carlos, I'm sorry. Okay, here we go. Carlos was a booking agent extraordinaire, I would say. He began booking mm. shows. When did first no, You know, I, I was running a venue in Eindhoven in the Netherlands and um, I was quitting that and up till then I only had booked very few shows outside of my venue but then I decided well the venue five years that's enough I wanted to do bigger things and other things and Sonic Youth who I had booked two or three tours for said you have showed us Europe we want to show you the US so they had mm. their first um, like country whatever show happening and they invited me as a tour manager that was their first u.s tour oh, their wow. first complete US really? tour. yeah oh, i didn't know that mm. that's what kim mm. told me yeah. fairly recently i'm sure yeah. and mm. um so you know i had i had been to new york once maybe twice but other than that i had no clue what i was running into but the same for mm. them. They had no clue what the whole thing would be like. So they um, invited me and um, we had a van that seated five people and we were six because we had a sound man. So we had a bat on top of the equipment Then someone had to lie down all the time. Otherwise, it was <laughs> impossible. <laughs> and, oh you know, we went, we went from New York. We went south and uh, uh, you know, up, down, all the way down to New Orleans and then from New Orleans to San Diego and from San Diego to um, uh, Seattle and from Seattle back to Boston, basically. Wow. And then so that was halfway the 80s, on huh? the way back. That was the 80s. Yeah. We were start, very young. 1986? 86, yeah. Yep. Wow. Yeah. And we carried uh, like a huge um, video thing. It was, you know, Nowadays you do like this, but that at that time it was like, uh, you know, big machines for batteries and tape, <laughs> and big yeah. machine as being as being the camera. Yep. So um, you know it's, yeah. That was the tour, and then half, and then half, you know, they Sonic Youth were always very picky about their and, opening acts. Yep. So the mm. first one we went uh, to DC, and uh, Pussy Galore was there waiting for us. And then some, you know, there was a whole range of uh, opening acts, but um, Firehose, no, mm. maybe Firehose didn't play, but we met <laughs> Mike Watt, the Sacred Trust, I remember very clearly. Mm -hmm. um, and then Dinosaur showed up in somewhere in the Midwest, I, I, I tend uh, to remember. <laughs> yes, it was, it was maybe Chicago, it was beyond, it was actually in the deep Midwest. Mm hmm because we drove all the way there and it was our very first tour <laughs> and it was the first time that Jay and Murph had ever really been outside of Massachusetts. Okay. Not true. Maybe they hadn't been to the Midwest, but they had certainly been out of Massachusetts. Mm. And we, had, we drove as far as Michigan first because that's where I lived. I grew up in Jackson, Michigan, which is close to where Steve grew up. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, Steve is from Lansing. I. So we stopped in Jackson and we got out of the car and Jay and Murph looked into the sky and they said, I've never seen so many stars, <laughs> which was amazing. It was a beautiful dinosaur, early dinosaur junior or dinosaur moment. We were dinosaur. We were not yeah. junior, but we did. We met up with uh, Sonic Youth, maybe. I don't remember where exactly. I'm sure it could be traced, but uh, Kansas City, Kansas. And that's where we, we joined the tour that Carlos was on this, this first. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, wow. I, I can say we did like five to ten shows together. Yep. And, um, you know, we felt fine with each other. And it was like, you know, we, we shared motel rooms probably. And whenever there was no motel, there was uh, people's houses. We stayed at Mercury Ref's house. Remember that? That was the last show we played was in Buffalo. And you would have, I would imagine that would be where you 
played or you stayed with Mercury Rev? Yeah, 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 yeah. And Mercury Rev and Flaming Lips have a very, they had a very intense connection. Okay, I didn't know that. Because the producer who produced Mercury Rev went on to produce the later Flaming Lips records, like a very um, successful one. The really like Soft Bullets. Yeah. That is a Mercury Mm. Rev influenced Mm -hmm. album, I would say. Yeah. But that's the last show we played with Sonic Youth, and it was the most. No, that's not true. It's not true. You would know. It's not true. Okay. Because um, <laughs> um, we, I, I'm very positively sure that you came down all the way to Hoboken. Oh. You played Maxwell's with Sonic Youth because in Buffalo you uh, learned how to play with Lee Cortez. We, we played Cortez the Killer with, with Lee. Lee. We did and this I, epic version of yeah. Cortez the Killer with Lee. And I think, but I'm. You know, one ninety-nine percent sure that you repeated that in in Hoboken. In Hoboken. Okay. And Fair I'm, enough. Didn't you? And we did a show in in CBGBs, but I'm not sure if you were on that bill. But anyway, see, there was there was definitely a, a big connection between me and Dinosaur, yeah. because you know I I was discovering the, the the country, but I was also discovering all of these people. It was like, oh my god. I, I, you know, I, I, a lot of new friends. Yeah, I mean, and you met Steve Albini on this trip as well. Steve was, uh, yeah. Yep. That yep. was, um, you know, and we didn't have internet. We, I think we barely had fax, maybe not even fax. No, we didn't have fax. <laughs> we had phone numbers and, and, and postcards. And then we, we started sending, um, uh, text messages no it was it was just making a call and i don't remember were you on sst at that time already um i think we were about to be signed to sst i th- i think it was had they just finished the evol record at the time this was the evol tour it was the evo because this is what this the amazing thing is we finished the tour and then we drove back home and uh, we were listening to EVOL, and we, there was the, the record ended was you know Expressway to Your Skull. Yeah. And it was a quiet moment, and Jay said, "I think we're in love with Sonic Youth." <laughs> what did he say? And I felt he said, "I think we're in love with Sonic Youth." <laughs> <laughs> and it was the most like it was the most earnest mm-hmm. and truthful. I mean, because we. Of course, things became much more contentious with us later. But that tour was like we were opening. I mean, I I'd, I idolized Sonic Youth for many reasons, artistically because of the way that, of their use of guitars and alternate alternate tunings, and and I just we just loved it, and we loved the tour so much. And we had this beautiful moment, this beautiful little quiet moment. I said, I think we are we're in love with Sonic Youth, <laughs> and I was like, Jay, we are. <laughs> I'm like, we are in love with Sonic Youth, and then we were. I think, I don't know. I really don't know my history that well. Obviously, um, I'm well known for partial facts. And, but um, we all. <laughs> some people seem to know. Some people yeah, remember some not, very specific fake. things. But uh, but yeah, I think then we then we were signed to SST, and then we did do the "You're Living All Over Me" record, which is mm. then what brought us yeah. was the reason that we were because Carlos what happened was then that because of these connections that Carlos is speaking of he became the booking agent for Big Black Steve Albini's band in Europe did it also Pussy happen? Galore Pussy Galore so he was like these are the the really <laughs> big bands the bands that I loved I mean Big Black Pussy Galore Sonic Youth these yeah. were the these were the bands that um, I was uh, we were part of that scene and that was something yeah. that was so important to me as a as a kid and then when we were signed to sst that was like the pinnacle that was like that was it and then carlos brought us to, to holland oh i did my gosh. Yeah. and uh um, wow. you know uh, and with phone calls and I'm, I'm you know i have no clue if anyone else was involved um I, by the time because the whole sonic youth tour was set up by sst by uh Glo- global was it called yeah i think it was called global and um so i had you know I, those guys knew me and I know those guys so they sort of maybe helped out at some level but um you know what one day they were at my train station <laughs> and I expected wow. three people there were four people was that was four. the first, first surprise <laughs> surprise 
brought Jens. We brought Jens with you us. Brought yeah. <laughs> we brought Jens. We brought Jens. Our friend that spoke. Uh, our friend that spoke German. He, he spoke German, so we yeah. thought we would have him with us because I believe we had done we did the Netherlands, but then we went on to Germany. Right? I like, think you know, I, like I showed you the other day, my agenda from that year. I didn't see that. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. That. I didn't bring it today. Ah, that's gonna be. Oh. Wait. To you're gonna take pictures. You're gonna take pictures of it for me. <laughs> no, it's see. very wow. basic. But it's like it's like all these, these, um, and then it's it it have every page where there's a Dutch gig. It's very specific. But then it says German show, Belgium show, <laughs> and then at some point uh. it says Italy, Italian <laughs> itinerary. You know, I, I lose it. I didn't make. You know, I was I was I was pretty good oh at it, but God. not good enough. It's like the so baby some, book some for the second disappear. and third child <laughs> just gets less and less. <laughs> it's true, it's true. You have the very the first few days of the baby the being born, days, and then after that, yeah, you don't care. You're like, oh, I'm exhausted. I can't. <laughs> I can't keep these detailed notes anymore. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Carlos. It's so sweet to hear your voice and to hear you talking about all these <laughs> memories. I just love it. What a gift for me to wake up to today. Oh, I was thinking about a couple of things when you were talking about, um, you know, that trip with Sonic Youth to the U.S. And gosh, the f I mean, I'm thinking immediately, of course, about the difference between now and then traveling the U.S., right? Like you have no GPS, yeah. no. I mean, did you guys just have huge maps in the car, in the van that you were like unfolding? Yeah. And like, right. were you working right. together right. to try to? No, no, you had these, you had the atlases. Randy McNally. Yes. Yep. That's right. Great. Yes. Yes. And the, the flip, right? The flip book. And then you would like, was it like a yeah. spiral bound book? And then, you know, I'm not whoever sure if it's spiral. Would... about spiral. Okay. Not yeah. sure about the spiral one. <laughs> oh my gosh. I used to use something similar to that, like a Thomas guide. It was called in uh, Los Angeles when I lived there, but it's like, it's a map book, but, um, you know, and then you're, you're navigating it just hope hoping right that everything is correct and by no means the most fastest or efficient way it's just what the map says <laughs> right no but you know the maps kind of um told us to get from city to city but then yeah. getting into the city it became right. a thing and so i have a little notebook that says you know four streets to the right like stop uh traffic lights to the left yeah. And yes. because your, your, your countries are very uh, grid-like, yes. unlike in Europe. In Europe, it's like, it's a, a, impossible to explain it that way. But because of the grid, yeah. it, yeah. it made That's it, true. it true. It's easier. And then you would call the person That's beforehand, true. and they would, yeah. they would read the directions over the phone to you, and you would say, yeah. so, I mean, I yeah. don't remember, I actually, I don't remember that time being difficult, per se. I think it well, seems didn't difficult know any different in either, you know. But, yeah. but as we were doing it then, I don't remember ever being really lost i don't remember ever you know it's just you just you got there and it wasn't it wasn't too much of a you, if you needed to you did someone would hop out and use a pay phone and, you'd, <laughs> and people would generally answer their phones you know um yeah right so, right uh yeah oh my uh, gosh no it's just so wild it's just so wild now yeah. think about how different it all is but i remember that thurston had this the huge boom box yeah we, this we, boom box uh, yeah. changed my life in many ways it was <laughs> hard, i mean in a few oh, well, pretty crucial ways i heard daniel johnston on this boom box for the first time among all the other crazy music that they were collecting while on the road and sharing with us and you know, but I you... had to carry that thing yeah. uh, some days, <laughs> and I smashed it into, uh, uh, into Thurston's knees or something like that. So at some point, he wrote down on it uh, Carlos the Destroyer. That's like oh. on, on the boombox. I remember that. And there's, there's pictures of that tour that. You know, I can I can see it, and you probably can see it, but yeah. no other person will be ever paying attention to it. But it's always a fun memory. Like that's the destroyer thing. Yeah. Oh my God. You carried it well, around, you know it, and you would, you would. What's that? Oh, well, I was just gonna say, you talking about you bringing up that boombox, Lou, jogged my memory to the other thing I was thinking about when Carlos was talking about being in the u.s with sonic youth was one directions but two the fact that he said they had such large video equipment and you know not everyone 
thought to do that? I mean, how incredible at that time because it was a lot more inconvenient you know it wasn't like now you can just easily document so much you know you had to really make an effort oh can you hear that <laughs> sounds like a tornado on my end um but uh i'm just thinking about wow like that's a interesting thing because you know dinosaur you weren't taking a huge camcorder with you on tour right you know it's not cute they were artists and especially well that's what i mean they, right it's a art. it's a and, multimedia yeah. art it's like they weren't just the music they were yeah. also thinking about like this greater uh, yeah. picture of what they were doing and i think that's really interesting i i didn't know that and so i'm kind of just loving that little I fun think fact the you know it, that kind of stuff. yeah yeah, that's cool because and that's now, like a real dedication looking, uh, to it. Sorry, I was just mm, saying that's a real dedication to it because it was so wildly yeah. inconvenient. <laughs> I'm sure. You know. But it was kind of a toy to have around because, you know, Lou can confirm that being on tour is a lot of boredom. And yeah. um, so we had this machine. And we sort of did all kinds of weird stuff with the camera. And, and <laughs> so when yeah, I look I back on the material, oh. it's it's not always oh. very high standard filming. Yeah, no, right. Which is the beauty of it, I think. You're capturing more of the mundane, right? And just that's the art, right? Is it's like the just yeah. the everyday kind of like slug of being on tour and doing that whole thing and... You know, Lou did that later, it seems like, when he was out with Sebado, he has all these videos yeah. of himself with, like, a smaller yeah. I do, actually, it was, a, it was when, um, interestingly, that was the, the tour that I took it on was one that was a Lollapalooza tour that mm -hmm. Dinosaur played the main stage. Mm -hmm. I, was, but I was with Sebado, and Kim and Thurston were on the side stage doing solo. Uh, Kim did Kitten. Okay. And Thurston played solo, where he played uh, kind of, like, early versions of songs that became... I like self-obsessed and sexy like early versions of that and they were playing the side stage so we were actually sharing the side stage with Kim and Thurston okay and Which, Julie uh, uh, Julie obviously was a kid at the time Julie came for its from Pussy Galore so and was it a Lola Palooza where Sonic Youth was also like no, the band? no 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 I think that they probably I think that they headlined later like mm -hmm. maybe a year later it was they were just doing it as side stage okay. artists wow. it was oh, pretty interesting, interesting. And, and Dinosaur were Dinosaur Jr. were were playing with Alice in Chains and Fishbone and Tool and I, I can't remember but it was it was a very it was you a know very, what that, I, I took a I think I, I was at that show <laughs> What? I think I was at that show. Yes, now that I'm thinking about it, but I it was in St. Paul too, um, down in Harriet Island. Yeah, we but on uh, that leg, we were, oh, okay. we were on the last leg of the tour in the Southwest. I don't think I, I have yeah, no memory was, of seeing Dinosaur Junior though when I was younger. I don't. Anyway, where did you grow and there was. I grew up in Minnesota in St. Paul. Which is, there's the okay. Twin Cities, they're called, St. Paul, Minneapolis, and mm -hmm. they're just right across mm -hmm. the Mississippi River from each other, and you've probably been to the Twin okay. Cities then, um, at least Minneapolis, yeah. like First Avenue, and, um, yeah. but yeah, yeah, so I grew up right in the heart of downtown St. Paul, and um, my parents are both music lovers, and so I had a lot of music in my life, you know, growing up, and... Um, and they're both artists, so yeah. Okay, wow, they both, lucky you. Um, I yeah, yeah. It is true, lucky me. I agree. I agree. Um, I, I grew up like right where we are now. You know, we're really? In a, we're in a smaller village. What's the name of the village? Mm -hmm. Hulst. 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 This is where my mom is from, and uh, my area is like oh, 20 minutes away from here, mm. and it's a very agriculture um, area uh -huh. and it's uh, like farmland so in a way my, my parents didn't have any interest in arts so growing up on a farm is not bad either <laughs> I mean were you, were you milking you mean milking cows no, no we didn't but you know <laughs> it was 
it was a mixed bag to start with and then we uh -huh. moved and then my mom said no more animals so we we went straight uh -huh. into um agriculture yeah yeah my parents both uh studied and lived in holland in harlem um and uh they the art school they went to uh had a sister school there sorry did you hear me i don't know <laughs> Okay. Yep. No, no, no. Yeah, I, I hear a, you very a, clearly. Oh, but so they they went to Minneapolis College of Art and Design, and they uh, and so when they were when they were uh, in college, they both at different times they didn't know each other while in college, <clears throat> and uh, they both studied and lived in in Harlem, and uh, but my parents loved loved the Netherlands so much. My middle brother's name is Holland, so okay. it's uh, <laughs> it's a special place in our family and um and my dad ended up living uh overseas then for two years he liked it so much and okay so i cool. i remember feeling like i had to go there someday you know i had to see this place but um i have not been to harlem where they lived i don't think the school exists anymore it was a long time ago at this point the wind got to be too much we resumed the conversation when the conditions got better but Carlos, I want to know if you're retired now. <laughs> Are you retired? If I'm tired now? or retired? <laughs> Are you tired and retired? retired? No, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm, oh. I'm fine. I'm totally fine. <laughs> Are you retired? Are, are you, are you out retired? of the business? I am out of the business. How long yeah, have you, you are, been out? Yeah. Ten years. Damn. Oh wow. Okay. And so. Yeah. You know, at some point, I was just. I think you. I'm, I'm not sure. I was having this conversation ten seconds ago, but I um, I got <laughs> bored. It was like yeah. you know, you go on tour, and as a musician, you're on the stage. You're sort of the hero of the night. All the girls want you. But as a booking agent, you're sitting there on the table. Some people want to talk to you, but you're so it's, it's it's not fun anymore. And when yeah. you start doing this, you're totally excited and you're totally happy about being on the road, being with your favorite people, and you know all these great shows. But then it stops, and then you know some people I know do this work they become cynical yeah and they become yeah. like talking about the good old days and they got yeah. it and and they stay because of there's money and there's all kinds of not fun things yeah so yeah. i said time to bow out to, going back to dinosaur <laughs> yeah. what about dinosaur what else? Yeah. I, I Let's think, talk about us. I look, think at how, somehow, look at how you know, cute Lou is. Did he just age so well or what? Isn't he the cutest? I mean, look at him. He's uh, aging in reverse, right? He's Benjamin Button. Do you know that movie? <laughs> well, you know what? I, He's going backwards, what happened last night, Carlos. We, we, played with, we played with this old bunch of bands last night. And after the show, I talked to the lead singer, guitarist, and I said, oh, I really loved your show. It was so inspirational. He said, oh, yes, well, you're not the original bass player of Dinosaur Jr. <laughs> ah. And that's, like, the best thing that anyone could ever say to me. <laughs> <laughs> that is, like, that is, like, my, it really is, it's the most, I have to say, vanity, a feather you know. Feather in your cap, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so you look like, so good. He, he <laughs> thinks that I'm, like, a the young guy. He thinks that I'm yes. a younger member of the band that was hired to play Because you bass. throw yourself around. You just, that was like, <laughs> that's... I love that. I was that. so excited. I have to, I made me feel, cute. I was like, okay, today's, I mean, I, today, I was feeling very Aww. old yesterday for various reasons. And uh, when I, he told me that, <laughs> Peter Pan Speed Rock. <laughs> there like, he Peter is. Peter Pan Speed Rock. I was, I was, I was blessed nice. with his, uh, his observation last night. But yeah, what about what about I love what it. else about Dinosaur Junior? Can you, you know, say? Um, the one thing which um, <laughs> happened, you know, mm. the timeline is kind of vague because in my agenda it says Dinosaur arrives on Tuesday, on Wednesday first gig, and then ten shows in a row. But at somewhere in that tour, you had a kind of a big break, and you stayed in my apartment for maybe a week or so. We did. Yeah, and mm. that's. Um, me and Monique decided to take a break <laughs> and we went to my parents. <laughs> and so we were at my parents 
and I had given you guys my phone number or my parents' phone number because no one had a phone number. Houses had phone numbers, and yeah. um, at some point, my mom comes to me. Somebody is calling, <laughs> but I think he's L. Because oh. it was Jay, and Jay was talking oh. in his typical Jay way. <laughs> and he's the worst on the phone. Jay, <laughs> I still have not recovered from trying to speak with him on the phone when I was 16 years old. Like, hello? Like, uh, uh. <laughs> but you can imagine my mom your mother, getting the oh, phone. Yeah, God. your mom, oh my goodness. And he was complaining. And I, I got him on the phone. And he was complaining not about Lou, but he was complaining about Murph. Murph uh -oh. was behaving okay. like a child. <laughs> and they were all like, you know, at that time, they, I, I think you barely were 20 or. You I were was children, yeah. Jay was 22. You were, we, we were young. I mean, not Very really. Very young adults. I was 21. I was, the, I was the youngest. I was 21. Jay was 22. Murph was probably 23 at that point. But. It was the first time but for still, all of you. It was. It was the for first men, time overseas. Young, a... That's like, listen, <laughs> early 20s for young men, it's still, you're very young. The, the, the Lou J thing happened later. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> the thing is that Carlos is such a, really a ray of sunshine, and he always has been. I mean, always been this just incredibly positive, smiling presence, but he, he booked some of the most the scariest plants <laughs> swans and, uh, you put swans ah <laughs> and the butthole servers swans oh was gosh. difficult but the butthole servers was scary they were scary mm. he brought all of these he brought all of these incredibly that's a, a thing uh carlos needs to talk more people need to talk to carlos about his past because in, in 1986 you know whatever late 80s late 80s. Late, 80s. late 80s the scariest coolest bands carlos was the connection and he brought them oh my god he brought them to europe yeah and swans <laughs> swans did i tell you my did I... swans didn't want to sleep on my floor they didn't <laughs> <laughs> Swans did not want to sleep. Oh my gosh, no, they, they needed a hotel room. Oh yes. Girard was Girard was difficult for the work. Oh, that's unsurprising. <laughs> but you know, I, you know, like ten years later and so many tours later, he came up to me to apologize for all the headaches he had caused. Really? Yeah, he was. Wow. He was sweet. I'd, I'd love to see him once. You know, he, mm. I'm not gonna say he's a friend, but he definitely <laughs> we share some history. <laughs> did you know that I was I was asked to play bass for Swans? No, I didn't know. That. After I was kicked out of Dinosaur Junior, we we had shared we were sharing a uh, tour manager, Steve. Um, Steve from Leeds. That's all you need to know. Steve mm -hmm. with the leather jacket from Leeds. <laughs> very very also beautiful little dude. Big smile on his face. But he he ended up working for Swans. And when he found out that I was kicked out of Dinosaur, the last tour I did with Dinosaur was with Steve from Leeds as our TM. And he said, you know, Swans need a bass player. And you need to call Michael, <laughs> Michael Chira from the Swans. And Swans were like, Adele, I don't, I don't think I've ever really rhapsodized or just explained my love of that band. And okay. how that band, everything, all of the angst in that band was me. I lived yeah. that band. Yeah. I lived uh -huh. every, every album was my, was my progression into adulthood. <laughs> How dark! <laughs> it was super dark. <laughs> Children of God. It was like ugh. money, <laughs> money, love. You know. So anyway, there. I had to call Michael Jura, and I said I kind of didn't want to do it. Honestly, I was like, because I knew enough about the band. People had told me enough stories that I, I knew that like going from Jay Mascus to Michael Jura could possibly mean that my life would become even more difficult, <laughs> and the communication would become even more agonized. So I, I called Michael Jura. I had to call him, which was, I mean, very <laughs> scary. <laughs> Hello, you know, I don't, I don't remember the exact phone conversation, but I said, can I take my girlfriend on tour? And he said, I don't think that would be possible. <laughs> it didn't happen. <laughs> okay. So thankfully, I feel like if I, if I had joined Swans at that moment, like to this right now, I would actually be covered in tattoos. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I would be a very different person. Yeah. One of the first ones I brought over was um, Scratch Acid. Oh, God. <laughs> That's pre Jesus Lizard Adele. Your brother's You're favorite. You're giving me band. so many great hashtags, was, Carlos. <laughs> Hashtag Scratch Acid. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Scratch Acid was totally fun. They were, they were 
Texas people. They were very communicative. They were really nice guys. And I uh, stayed in our apartment and uh, I, I think we loved them because they were so like part of the family. <laughs> and um, I think Ray Washam was, you know, her favorite. <laughs> yeah. Ray, a legendary drummer. Ray Washington. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's oh like, um, uh, thinking back of all this is like really fun. And talking about mm. it is even more fun. So, Carlos, do you just come around then to just say hi to everyone when they're in town and hang out and yeah. visit? Yeah. yeah. That's got to be more it's fun, a, right? You know, it's nearby, you know. And, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's definitely more fun than being um, involved and having yes. responsibility. No responsibility at all. Exactly. And you can just, just come here. and go. You can be like, hey, let's go to dinner. Let's not. Whatever. You're not on the clock, right? It's like... Right. So, and so you, you did this with yeah. Kim last night. Yeah. So Kim, oh, Kim, Kim was there in, last in night? Belgium last night. In oh, Belgium. Yeah. Belgium. Yeah. So that's oh, also like 35, 40 minutes away from where I have my yes. farmhouse. So wow. I went there. Am I welcome in your farmhouse? That's the other question. You're welcome in no, Greenfield. Course. Can I come of to course. your farmhouse? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the end of Mini Music Monday from Raw Impressions. Thank you for listening.